sorry. And then I brought the death of your son, father, brother, uncle, grandson, nephew, and the rest of your family to your home. Katie, I understand a mother's love, and I am sorry I broke your heart. My heart is broken for all of you. Earlier, when you said that I didn't look at you during the trial, I don't believe I had a right to. I didn't even have a right to be in the same room with you. I am so sorry that I hurt you so badly. My heart is broken and devastated for all of you. I pray for Dante and all of you many, many times a day. He is not more than one thought away from my heart, and I have no right for that, for him to be in my heart. I do pray that one day you can find forgiveness only because hatred is so destructive to all of us. And that I pray peace will always be with you and your family. Again, I am so sorry. And to the community of Brooklyn Center, I do owe you an apology too. I loved working for you. And I am sorry what has happened to our community since the death of Dante. And the men and women who work for you still are good, honorable people and will work hard for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Potter. Okay, this is... This is one of the saddest cases I've had <clears throat> on my 20 years on the bench. On the one hand, a young man was killed, and on the other, a respected 26-year veteran police officer made a tragic error by pulling her handgun instead of her taser. Thank you uh, to everyone who spoke. I, am, I have been profoundly moved by the comments of the Wright family. Dante was very loved. His son has lost a father. And Mr. and Mrs. Wright, I cannot begin to understand the grief of losing a child. I'm so sorry for your loss. Kimberly Potter honorably served her community for 26 years as a police officer. She was a respected officer and consistently went over and above the call of duty. She's a wife, a mother, an aunt, a granddaughter, a colleague, and a friend to many. In addition to the letters that were forwarded to me by Mr. Ng, I received hundreds and hundreds of letters in her support from colleagues, family, friends, acquaintances, community leaders and members, and even strangers. I read them all. They paint a portrait of a woman who touched a lot of people in a good way. I want to talk briefly about the aggravating factors that were brought up in this case. As I mentioned before, the state initially took the position Ms. Potter should receive a sentence above the guidelines and filed a brief in support of two aggrav aggravating factors under Blakely. All parties agreed that I would determine whether aggravating factors existed to justify a harsher sentence than that set forth in the guidelines. I feel compelled to address the grounds for that request because they were made public 
And I think it is important to note they were not proven in this case. The state did not meet its burden of proof on the first factor. It is based on defendant causing a greater than normal danger to the passenger in the car and two other officers when she fired. But the shot only hit Dante Wright. The passenger and the officers were not injured by that shot. The cases cited by the state in its brief did not support its position. In fact, they illustrate why, why this case does not involve a greater than normal danger to others. In the Fleming case, he fired a gun six times in a park filled with children. In State versus Omaha, defendant fired numerous shots into two apartment buildings. There is no comparison here. The state also did not meet its burden of proof on the second Blakely factor. Contrary to the state's claims, Kimberly Potter did not abuse her position of authority. In fact, it is undisputed Ms. Potter or Officer Potter was in the line of duty and doing her job in attempting to lawfully arrest Dante Wright on the warrant when she mistook her gun for her taser. What's more, she drew her taser legitimately to protect a fellow officer on the other side of the vehicle who could have been dragged and seriously injured if the car were to speed away. Officer Potter's conduct clearly was not significantly more serious than that typically involved in the commission of the crime in question, justifying an upward departure. Turning to defendant's request for a dispositional departure, there is no question that Ms. Potter is extremely remorseful. She showed that today, she showed that um, when it happened. It is also beyond dispute that she is particularly amenable to probation. But the court retains the discretion to make departure decisions independently. The court is not required to depart even where mitigating factors are present, and that's set forth in State versus Birch, 689 Northwest 2nd, 276, affirmed by the Supreme Court, 707 Northwest 2nd, 660. This has been an extremely difficult decision. In making my decision, I look to the purposes of incarceration. There are four, retribution, incapacitation, deterrence, and rehabilitation. Three of the four would not be served in this case. Incapacitation refers to the physical removal of a convicted person to prevent them from committing future crimes. That is not an issue in this case. Kimberly Potter does not present a danger of future crimes, obviously. Deterrence refers to the prevention of future crime and the idea that those who have committed crimes will be discouraged from reoffending after experiencing punishment. That purpose would not be served here. Considerations and having carefully considered the comments of the family and of both Dante Wright and the comments of Kimberly Potter as well as the arguments of counsel, it is the sentence and judgment of this court that you shall be committed to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 24 months. You shall serve two-thirds of that time 
or 16 months in prison and a third on supervised release, assuming no disciplinary, disciplinary offenses.